How do frugal people save to buy a home even on a low income? Well, we did it and we're going to tell you how. Hi, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. From Under the Median. If you're unfamiliar with us, we raised our four sons debt-free, mm -hmm. including paying cash for our home, when at the time our income averaged under $40,000 a year. So actually buying a home is the topic of today's video. We had a lot of questions from viewers about exactly how we did this and just the process that we went through in order to set ourselves up to be able to purchase a home. Now, as we mentioned, the home we paid cash for was this home, but we did in the past in 1992 purchase our first home. And Larry is gonna tell you a little bit more about what that whole process looked like. Well, first off, I have to state that we purchased that home a long time ago. Yes. It's been, what, 28 years ago. So house prices were different. But basically, if you scale everything up to today, things really haven't changed all that much. And the principles, of course, haven't changed at all. One of the first things that we did was we wrote a list on a piece of paper of some important things, items that we wanted to see in our new home. And that would be the number of bedrooms, mm -hmm. uh, uh, where the home was located in the city, uh, maybe even school districts were taken into consideration, although we were planning on homeschooling. Uh, there were there were several different items. I think we had a list of 28 items uh, that we had in mind. So the first thing that we started doing is we set an arbitrary amount of what we thought we would like in a home based on the listings that we were looking at. So we had that in mind. We went to the bank. We gave them all of our information and they told us how much they would loan us. The amount that they would loan us was way more oh, yeah. than we could comfortably live on. We took their amount, we figured out what the mortgage payment was gonna be and how much we'd have left at the end of the month. We <laughs> barely would have enough left to put food on the table and maybe a little ga a little gas in the car. And I mean, really not much. It, was, it, was a, it would have been a terribly tight budget, impossible to live on. So we adjusted the amount way down from what they had. I don't know what percentage we lowered it. Do you remember that, what the percentage would be? I think it was 35 or 40%. I mean, it was, it was a chunk. They were willing to load a, loan us far more money than we would have been comfortable uh, being loaned and paying back. So, you know, that's, so those are our first couple of tips. When you're looking at buying a home, the first thing you need is a prioritized list. And you'll hear us say the words prioritized over and over and over again, because anytime we make a list, it's prioritized. So by prioritized list, and Larry talked about it. So some of the things on the list that we mentioned were like the number of bedrooms in the school district and things like that. But even as you're listing those things, you need to put the things that are most important to you at the top so that you know when you're looking at the list, the things toward the bottom, those are the things that you're willing, that you have a little bit of wiggle room, right? And one of the things we had to drop off of that list that was important to us was the number of bedrooms. We figured out that if we dropped one bedroom, we went from a three bedroom to a two bedroom house for possibilities. That dropped the price down substantially. Then we had to look at the neighborhoods. We had to adjust that a little bit. And at first, it was very alarming. The first couple of times that we looked in our adjusted price range, it was pretty sad. But we stayed the course. We took our time. We actually took two years to buy because we weren't in a hurry. We had a very good house to live in. It was a rental house, but the rent was very low on it. And we eventually found a house in a nice neighborhood at our price range, and it, it met most of the criteria that we had in mind. So after you have found out what the bank will loan you and adjusted it to what you are comfortable <laughs> being loaned, then that's when your market research does begin. And as Larry mentioned, that's when you are going to do things like we, um, now when we bought our first home, we didn't do this, but with the second home we did. Uh, Larry works for our city and is required to live no more than 20 miles from City Hall. And so we literally got out a map and got out a compass and circumscribed um, a circle 
from City Hall, 10 miles out in any direction, and then 20 miles out in any direction. If you do that, you will be amazed at how many like little suburbs and small towns and communities are actually within that circle. We were shocked at all of a sudden the amount of like territory that we had available to us that we could look for homes in. And the next thing we did, of course, this is back in the day before we relied very much on the internet. Uh, we went to open houses and we physically looked at homes because we wanted to see what the market was for that price of a home. What was the condition of the homes? Uh, what can our money buy? So that's the next thing that you need to do. Find out what your money can buy. And you'll be surprised at the variety of homes that are out there in the price range that you set. Now, you can only go to open houses if you have nerves of steel. <laughs> you cannot go out to an open house for years before you have your down payment saved up and fall in love with a house and then have your heart broken because you can't afford that house right now. We went to open houses knowing and we were absolutely united in the fact that we weren't buying yet. We were doing market research and we told the realtors that met us at the door were doing market research. We're just finding out what we can afford. Uh, so just make sure that you're not going out there with something in the back of your mind that says, oh, if I find the perfect house, I'll, I'll buy right now. No, you need to wait. Our advice to people, now banks will loan you up to 28% of your gross income. That is a lot of money that they'll loan you. So your gross income is not what you bring home in your paycheck. Mm -hmm. That's everything before taxes and, and any, any other fees are taken out of your paycheck. So I don't believe, and we don't believe, that, that that is a good indicator of how much you can afford in a home. What is a better number, mm -hmm. and, and I think this is uh, a plan that uh, I believe that many uh, home advisors would, would uh, advocate, would be 25% of your net income. That's what you actually bring home. So it's, it's a little bit more affordable to take that slice out of your income than try to take 28% of your gross. The next thing that you need to do is to ask yourself a series of questions. And so we call this forecasting your living expenses. So when you listen to a weather forecast, that weather forecaster is telling you, here's what we think is going to happen 24 hours from now, 48 hours from now, 72 hours from now, you get the idea. So you are thinking ahead and saying, this is what I think is going to happen. So Larry's gonna tell you some of the things that we tried to take into consideration and forecasted when we were trying to make our list. One of the main items for us, and I think it's an important item to consider, is the property taxes. That's an amount you're going to pay annually or maybe twice a year. And that's a very important amount because that tells you what bracket you're in. So uh, property taxes were very important to us. We did set an upper limit on the property taxes and it eliminated a lot of neighborhoods that we just didn't look into because we knew that the taxes were out of our reach. The next item that we would look at is the distance that that home is from places that you're going to commute to, like your, your schools, your place of employment, maybe your church, maybe even your friends, groceries, shopping. You want a place that's going to be, it's going to fit into your needs and how much money you want to spend in transportation and commuting costs. So that was something that we took in consideration when we were looking out of town. We really didn't want to get much more than 10 to 15 miles out of town. Otherwise, it was going to really escalate our driving costs and our gasoline. So that's another area that you want to consider. And up, upkeep and maintenance on the cars, too. You have to take that in consideration because mm -hmm. you're putting more miles on those tires and on the struts and on the... I don't even know car terms. Okay, car people, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, so it, it's more wear and tear on your vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we did when we... When we looked at distances, we would like hone in to a neighborhood or a small neighboring town and we would go drive there. You remember that? Oh yeah. And we would pick, um, 
different times of day. We would drive there in the evening and and, um, and we would do it after we both got off work or whatever. And we were like tired <laughs> because that like that's the test of it, right? Oh, yeah. Ten miles out doesn't seem so bad on a Saturday afternoon when you've been hanging out and doing things around the house all day and you've gotten a full night's sleep. But the test of that 10 miles out is when it's six o'clock or seven o'clock at night and you've gone off work and you're tired and you're driving that. That's when you want to do it because that's when you're going to go, oh, golly, this seems like an awful long drive. And we would, what was interesting to us, if we did this more than once, and that's why we, why we really recommend it because inevitably the first time we would drive that like 15 miles out of town, we would go, oh, this isn't too bad. We could do this every day. <laughs> but then we would do it again. Uh, yeah. And and the second or third time we did it, we were like, dang, this seems like a lot farther <laughs> than it did the first time. Because the first time you're kind of excited and you're mm-hmm. getting ready to explore a new area and you think it may be your new home. So that's why we say do it multiple times because that you're going to be doing it every day. If you move there, you're not going to be just doing it once. You're going to be doing it every Every day of the week, and, and that's when it's going to seem long. And that's especially if yeah. you, of course, have a home that you're very interested in that you want to do that. Uh, the next item that you want to consider, and this is more important if you're buying out of town, you're buying in a, in a rural area, mm-hmm. what kind of water supply does it have? Does it have a, a city water supply, or are you on a well? Uh, what, what is that going to cost you? Because <laughs> a, a well can have some maintenance costs. Um, sometimes they go dry, sometimes the pump goes bad. Uh, there's also sewage to consider. Uh, is it uh, uh, is it on a septic tank, or once again, is it is it a city system? Sometimes you buy on the edge of town, you'll get the benefits of all the city services. So those are also some things to consider. And there's other things too. The other thing that we found out was that especially in smaller towns, like your choices for internet were very limited. Way down. There was a, a town that we were kind of interested in. And the internet was like, there was only one internet service available and it was like $65 a month. And that was a long time ago. Yeah. And we were like, mm, no, I don't think we're going to be moving here anytime soon. So, you know, there are just, dif- dif- every small mun- municipality has different, like sometimes their water is more expensive or their sewer is more expensive. You need to think about all of those costs and figure those into your cost of living there. The other thing I was going to add, because we talked about um, about driving to places, mm-hmm. when we got really interested in a home, we would drive there um, like uh, in the evenings, like on the weekends, and just drive around um, like with the windows down to hear if it was really loud in that neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Or there were a lot. There seemed to be a lot of people out. We would get. We would park the car, get out, and and take a walk in the neighborhood to see. Cause like the sign of a good neighborhood is like a. It's very walkable. You see a lot of families out that are walking along. And there's a a, a biking trail about a half a mile from our current home. And that was a huge consideration mm-hmm. when we moved here. The boys were all still pretty young. They were the oldest was 14. The youngest was two when we moved here, and. Um, and it was all sidewalks so they could ride their bikes directly from here to the hiking or biking trail. But because of that trail system, there's a lot of like, you know, families and people who mm-hmm. are out and are walking are very friendly. Are the people friendly when they see you? Um, so we, we did that kind of market research too, to just kind of scope out the neighborhood and say, and if people greeted us, often they would. And we'd say, hey, we're looking at that house down there. Can you tell us what's the neighborhood like? What do you like most about this? How's the schools? Your kids like going there? And people will give you lots of information about the neighborhood if you just kind of do that and make them you know aware that you're interested in the neighborhood. Another consideration on a home that we really had our eyes on that was on the edge of town, very much on the edge of town, um, we, we discovered that they were going to bring in a new interstate system within yes. like, what, a, a quarter mile from the home or yes. less less like, than a quarter like mile? Directly in front of the house. It was going to be like... Yeah, and we, really saw, cool. we saw our house... Uh, you know, value going way down because of that. So these, there's so many things to consider. You, you won't maybe be able to hit every, every single thing, but it's good to just kind of consider all of these little aspects that go into the cost of owning a, a, a home you're going to be moving into. And I think we found that out, if I recall correctly. Um, I think someone from church 
we said, hey, we're looking at this house on this, you know, this road. We gave them the address, the road. And they go, oh, yeah, that's where they're putting the new interstate through. And we went, wait, what? What's What's interesting is that they never did put it in. No, they, they I know. They later v vetoed the project. So. Oh, there you go. They were quite certain at that time. But that let me say, for the price, we found a better home than that one was. Yeah, so did. we did okay on that one. All right. So what else? Oh, um, utilities. Those are huge. Talk about that just a little bit. Well, if you're out in the country, uh, you may not have natural gas supply to the house. So it, it might be on propane. And propane is more expensive. Uh, your electricity cost probably won't won't vary too much. You want to consider how you're, how you're going to heat your home. Uh, so there's there's different way and and how the home is heated too will also uh, you know figure into the costs. Interestingly, we actually took our our, our utility bills from our first home and we extrapolated because this home is a what's a good I don't know I haven't figured out at least forty percent bigger than our first home. Um, we we sort of tacked on some money figuring that the utilities in this house would be more expensive than that house mm -hmm. um but it actually wound up not being the case that house was 1930 and there were there was no insulation in the walls this house is 1958 it's six inch thick brick and so it actually has not cost us any more but we were prepared for those prices to go up and we had sort of figured that into what we could afford well, and we did some improvements on the home to reduce that amount too. We we changed the windows, we put in better windows, and then later we did a lot more insulation uh, in the home. So that had, I think we're at a point now where we're spending less in utilities here than we did in the smaller home. Yeah, which is kind of a little odd, but it's true. Yeah. Apparently, insulation in your attic makes a huge difference. <laughs> um, the, and there's another, we call this the convenience factor because we didn't know what else to call it. What is our convenience factor and how did we figure that into what we would and would not consider? Well, I kind of mentioned this, but you want to consider uh, how far you are from places that you drive to on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Doctor's appointments, your shopping, your schools, church. Uh, once again, that all that figures into your transportation costs. Uh, for me, we were right on a bus line, and for two years, I actually rode the bus down to work, and that really took our transportation costs down because we had big cars that used a lot of gas. Uh, so there's lots of different things to consider. One of the things that we really did look at was school ratings. Even though when we bought our first home, we did not have any children, and we bought this home, our children ranged in age from 14 to 2, but we have always homeschooled. So why would we care? what the school ratings were and how people liked the public school system. Because when you go to resell that house, mm -hmm. that makes a huge difference in what you can ask for your home is buying in the neighborhood with a little bit better school system or um, the school system where people feel more satisfied that their children are in that school system. And so we did take that into consideration even though we knew we would never ever use the school system. Uh, the next thing you can do after you've made your prioritized list and you have kind of forecasted all of your living expenses, and as always, remember, all the tips we're giving you, we suggest that you write this down. Don't keep it in your head. Make sure you write it all down and make it prioritized. Um, we, uh, we let other people know that we were looking. Oftentimes, you can find a great deal, somebody who is maybe downsizing, their kids are grown, they're downsizing. In order to save on the uh, realtor fees, they're willing to give you a discounted price on the house. We had some friends that found a house this way, their first home. It was an older lady who was retiring, and she shot them a lowball price, and they're like, are you sure that's all you want for the house? And she was like, yep, that's all I want for the house. So, And, and they got an incredibly good deal because it was a win-win. So, I mean, don't, don't undervalue the house. Don't expect them to discount the value of the house for you, but certainly it's a very common practice for them to say, you know what, I'm gonna have to pay X percent realty fees and I'll just take that off and we'll, we'll do the deal. But do make sure that you get a lawyer involved no matter what. We would never, ever advocate anybody buying a home unless you are a lawyer <laughs> uh, with, without a, a lawyer looking over the... Um, the uh, all the documents and making sure everything's in order. Mm -hmm. Even though we paid cash for this house, we had a, 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 a lawyer. Now, I, I just want to touch back on another uh, point that we made earlier. We, we had a list of 28 items that we were looking for in a house. What I would suggest is take the items that you like about the current place that you're living in, mm -hmm. write those things down. Maybe these are things you would want in your next home. 
and then write down, maybe add some things to it. I, there is one item that, that Hope wanted. We never did get into either home, and that was a fireplace. <laughs> and we just didn't get one with a fireplace. I wouldn't have mind having a, having a wood-burning stove. We still could put one in, but we're probably not going to because of the insurance liability on that. But uh, but there, there are some things that uh, we did get most of our 28 points in this home. And uh, so it was worth kind of, you know, getting that down. Uh, one of the things that, that we had um, really high up on our prioritized list, do you remember this? It was the item that you're like, I want, that was Larry's, like, he was like, I want, and what was it? Well, the driveway. <laughs> our, our old house had a very steep driveway that emptied out onto an extremely narrow um, road, and, and the road was, was had a real sharp crown on it. So to get the cars out of that driveway, you had to pull at a, at a very severe angle in order to not drag the bumpers. And I mean, I don't think Hope could ever back the cars up into that driveway. Uh, and it had a garage, so I would put the best car in the garage. But in the winter time, if it snowed or, or we had ice, I couldn't use that driveway. We had to put our cars out front. So I wanted a level driveway. We not only got a level driveway, we got a two-star. Uh, we got a two-stall garage where we could actually put the cars inside, and that was much better. Uh, make a goal chart. Once you have all of your your you got your wish list together, you're doing your market research, you're figuring out what you can afford and not afford. Uh, you got your prioritized list, and remember, you're probably not going to get everything on your list. One of the things that actually was pretty high on our prioritized list that we did not get, it was on the original prioritized list um, for this house, was we wanted four bedrooms. And we realized that fourth bedroom was going to cost us another $30,000. Mm -hmm. And so we just made a new list and crossed it off. So be prepared to compromise on that list. But know, know what, you're, what you're not going to compromise on. But the rest of it, you got to be willing to finagle with just a little bit. Um, after you've got that together, make a goal chart. We're huge on keeping goals where you can see them and track your progress. Um, in fact, if you would like to have some of our, our goal sheets, then uh, I'll put a link to um, a free ebook that we offer that has savings and debt uh, goal sheets and you can request that um, and you'll find the link to it in the description of this program But yeah, we we have goal sheets that that we track everything on and make sure you can see it Yeah, and the, the last item would be very important is to have patience uh, It's never good to get into a hurry when you're making a major purchase like this take your time do your research do your looking and 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 wait for it. Wait for what you're looking for. It'll be worth it in the end because it's a major investment. Uh, you'll be glad that you took the time uh, to do all the research and to get the house that you wanted. Hey, some of you have asked, so we'll tell you. This is just our opinion. We recommend a 20% down payment and a 15-year fixed rate mortgage. That was what we did on our first home. Of course, our second home, we paid cash, but our first home, we got a 15-year mortgage with 20% down.